In this video, I'm going to take you through working with text inside of GIMP. To begin, uh, there's a whole realm and element of working with typography. Uh, there are specific do's and don'ts. There's serif versus sans serif, etc. So you could actually just go down a rabbit hole just focusing strictly on uh, typography. So the big thing, though, that I want to demonstrate to you is just working with the type tool and also how it appears inside of GIMP. To this point, we have worked with some layers. We've worked with just regular layers where we painted on them, but also we've, uh, you know, opened as a layer when it comes to external graphics. The first thing to understand about text in different types of graphical programs is normally they are actually going to make their own text layer. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and grab the type tool here. Now, the tool options are going to become really important with this tool. This is probably one of the first tools that we're looking at that really these the controls really become important. So a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to start off with is actually I'm going to come under these tool options here because I'm working on a black background just out of the gate here. I'm going to change my color here under color to white. Now, you have two options whenever you start working with this tool. The first one is you can actually click and drag to make a text area if you choose. So I can say, you know, hello world. And you can just click once here and automatically for you, if you notice here in your layers panel, it'll automatically make a brand new layer for you. The only thing, um, I'm going to grab the move tool here now so that we can work between these two layers for a little bit here. The only thing to point out to you is whenever you're working with text, from a default standpoint, it just uses the text as the layer name. If this really bothers you, you can actually come in double click on the text and you can change the name if you want to. It's up to you. I have some students that prefer to change and have a little bit more description here. I have some that just leave it as the text. Now, a couple of things with your selection tool that can be a little bit off-putting. If you are not clicking directly on a letter, you won't be able to drag. So for instance here, you can see right below here, and I'll actually go ahead, I'm going to come down here a second. Let's go ahead and zoom into like maybe 200%. There we go. Even though I'm in this text area, I can't actually click and move on anything. However, if I click on the letter H where the coloring is, I can actually reposition the text accordingly. That's just a little finesse as far as GIMP is concerned. So. I've gone ahead here and I've added some text areas, but let's say I'm looking at this and I say, okay, you know what? I have this first text area up here, that's fine. But this second line of text, I actually wanted it to be a different typeface. And you know what? I actually wanted it to be a different color too. Instead of things like the paintbrush where you have to use the move tool to reposition and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna come back to that type tool. And this is where the tool options come into play. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna highlight, this is the text field and you can see I get that yellow dashed border there. And now I have my cursor in here. GIMP highlights a little bit differently than other software packages. You see how I'm getting individual kind of bars here showing the spaces in each individual letter. Two ways that you can edit this. The first way here is you can come in and just change the size. You can also change the color directly. You can also change the kerning and your baseline if you need to. If you want to change the font though, under the tool options that becomes active for the type tool, this little picture here where it says text, if you click on that, it's going to showcase all of the text that is currently installed on your system. So for instance, if I choose like snap, you see how it changes the typeface. Uh, maybe we come in, let's choose, uh, maybe like a s Rockwell is always a good one. And then maybe I say, you know what? I actually want this to be 
you know, bright red. This is important information here. And I say, okay. So long as you have the entire text field selected, it's going to make all of those changes. You can, however, like for instance, I'm going to deselect and now just click on the word this. Maybe I want to come in and make that a little bit lighter. So there you can see also I've made those changes. Once you make the changes, you can come back up to your move tool. And now we can go ahead. We can maybe reposition this under our text field or our text area. And now you have kind of a different design going on there. One last thing to point out about text is you want to be really careful in your layout practices. When you are working in videography, it is really difficult as far as reading text against a moving image. That's why oftentimes with like subtitles or news tickers, which are the items that appear at the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, it has some sort of backdrop to it. The reason is, is like if we go ahead here and I'm going to open as layer here, let me go ahead and grab one of those graphics from the previous demos here. And let me just put that behind the text here. You see already how this is, you're, you're kind of squinting, especially in a text area here. Even despite having that darker color there, as far as the red goes, still really difficult to read against the green. That's because they're high contrast to one another. So a couple of things that you could do here to fix this, one of which is actually the opacity of the graphic. So maybe I say 50% or let's actually take it down to maybe 20. Notice that just by changing that graphic, having that black backdrop for the background color already makes a world of difference as far as being able to read this. Now, just as a side note, for a graphic like this, because of all of the green in it, I would not normally use a red text on top. So, but however, you can see up here now where it says like, hello world, much easier to see as far as the layout goes. Now, another option that you can work with if you want to is also, you know, changing the backdrop. You could get super fancy, uh, for instance here, uh, maybe I call, make a brand new layer. We're going to call it scribbles. And okay, so it's behind hello world. Maybe like using the brush tool and let's go ahead here. I'm going to pick like a really kind of light brush there. And maybe I will keep to the greens, but what I'll do is really make it like a dark, dark, dark forest green here. And now what I can do is kind of just using that brush effect here can come in and just add a little bit of extra solidity behind your typography here. So you kind of get a neat effect, makes it a little bit easier to read, etc. Now, the final thing just to point out here, as far as working with the text, one of the last things you might want to consider doing overall. And what I'll actually do is I'm going to hide that scribbles layer and let's make a brand new layer. And we're going to call this box. What I'm going to do here is on the new layer, I'm actually going to click and move and create a selection called rectangle. So I'm going to actually just put this over top of this is a text field. So I've made that selection area and you can tell that you made it because you should have the little we call them marching ants as far as the selection is concerned. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the bucket fill tool. Now this might be under gradient if you have gradient active, but I'll go ahead and grab the bucket fill and I have it set to foreground color. So we'll, we'll work with the dark green. Making sure that I'm still on that box layer, I'm going to go ahead and just click in the selected area. And here you can see now I've, I have this solid behind it that makes it a lot easier to read. The only important thing you have to remember is when you are done working with a selection tool, you need to come back to either your move tool to go back to the default for your tool options. But above all, under the select drop down menu, you need to click none. And that's going to deselect everything. And you can go back to working in your scene as you were previously. So I clicked on none. Notice the marching ants have disappeared. And now I have this solid shape that I can work with as far as my tools are concerned. 
So that's the basics of just placing text and things you can do to make it a little bit more visible whenever you are working in a software package like GIMP.